Hi again, uh, here we are to continue talking about basic JavaScript and we're gonna finish, um, or we're gonna continue working on our uh, our shopping cart. And uh, you can see that, uh, you know, I've got my shopping cart code here. I've created a, an array to hold the cart and an add item function to add items to the cart and a show item function to display those items. Currently, when we add an item, we take the name of the item and we push it into the cart. What we really want to do is we want to keep track of, of multiple things for each item in the cart. I want to keep track of the name, I want the price, and I also want to keep track of the quantity, like how many of that item are, are currently in the cart. So how are we going to do that? So JavaScript gives us an, another collection type called an object. So an object is like an array, it can hold multiple items, but the object assigns each item a key. So the key lets us reference that element um, by name, okay? And so the shopping cart is okay to keep track of all the items in your cart um, in a list by index. So we know the first, the second, the third, but when it comes to the, to the actual items in the cart, it might be nice if each item had a name and a price and a quantity that we could use to keep track of, uh, of those values, right? So what we'll do, is we'll make an object. So before we do the work here, let's take a quick look at object. So I'm gonna make a new variable called const object, and we define an object kind of like we defined an array with the square brackets, we define an object with the curly braces, okay? So if I make an object and it looks like this, you know, um, and what we can do is we can put things in it. So if I say, um, let's say name colon, and then I put a value after it, right? So this is the key, and then there's a colon followed by the value. So if I say name is like shoe and uh, uh, price, or prime, wait, price is, uh, is uh, 9.99, and uh, quantity is three. Everybody has three shoes, right, okay? Um, then what I could do is I could say, you know, console.log object like this. Let's, let's test our code. So we'll, we'll see this code running here in our, in our browser in a moment, right? Uh, let me move this window over here and get uh, my browser here. Okay, there we go, right? So I'll run the code here, and you can see there it says name, uh, shoe, price, nine ninety nine, quantity, three, right? <clears throat> if And that's the whole object, right? So that's what happened here. If you just wanted to get one of the elements from the object, you could say object.key, or name in our case, and it should give us shoe, and if I say, you know, console.log um, price, then it'll give me the price. And if I say console.log uh, quantity, it'll give me the quantity. So let's, let's try that. So if I refresh it here, um, let me save and, and refresh, right? You'll see here it says, uh, you know, there was the object that we, we did on line 17 and then shoe came from line 18 right here and price from 19 and 20. And you can see the line numbers here, it's the console showing me like where it ran this code or where this output came from. <clears throat> and you know, if I wanted to find out how much the price of three shoes was, I could log um, console log um, object dot price and then the asterisk represents multiplication, so I could say object dot um, quantity, okay? And if I refresh it here, it's 2997, okay? So let's apply that down here to our, um, our item. So I'm gonna get rid of all this code because that was just for testing. And you, you, know, you should try this out. Type it in there, you know, uh, check the console. If you get any errors, try and resolve them, right? Uh, maybe try some other objects, um, add some different properties here to the object or different keys with different values and try and log those, right? So practice with that so you're comfortable with how the object works, right? And then, OK, 
continue with the video here. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a an object here with add item. Okay. So why don't we do this? I'm going to make a new constant here called item. And then I'm going to make it a new object. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a name. And I'll set that equal to name. And then I'll give it a price and set it equal to price. And then I'll give it a quantity. And by default, the quantity will be one. OK, so here I've got name is name, price is price, and quantity is one. Now, this might look a little weird, but the value or the name on the left side is always the key. And then the value on the right could be anything. And you could put it in quotes and you could say, you know, hello or whatever. But I want to get the string that you passed here. Now, if I put the name of the variable there, then that will be the value. OK. So remember, when you said add item here, this string value, Apple, was assigned to this variable. And then the value of that variable is this one right here. And it's assigned to this key, right? And when you put uh, 99 cents here, then that was assigned to the second parameter variable in add item. And then that value ends up here in our object. OK, it doesn't end up here even though these have the same name. OK, and I'll show you why we want to use the same name later. There's sort of a shortcut we can use to, to minimize our code and make it a little easier to write. OK, so right here is the quantity. And then I put one there for the quantity. And now what I want to do is I want to take item and instead of name, I want to push item into the cart. OK, so there we go. And if I refresh my code here, you'll see that I've got an array with one item here, followed by, let me make that a little bigger, followed by a second item here and a third item here, right? Let me zoom in on that, right? So I've got all three items in my cart. And they have the square brackets on the outside because I have an array of objects. OK, so I have an array. The first item in the array is everything here up into the comma, right? And that is one element, like one thing. But that thing is an object, which is another collection type. And it has a couple keys in it. And then the second item is this one, and it's one object, and it has a couple keys, right? And then there's a third one, right? OK, so then we can see it says three items there. OK, great. So that's looking pretty good. You know what I'd like to do, though, is this show items. <clears throat> if I just log the card itself, that's not like super useful. Maybe I'd like to print this out so it looked nice, right? <clears throat> So let's try that, right? So the thing now that we're going to look at is we're going to look at arrays. So arrays um, hold a list of items. And every item in the list is accessed by an index. So it always has a number, OK? So we can get at the items in the array by doing this. I'm going to say um, console.log. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say cart bracket 0, right? And when I do that, let me make a little space here, right? When I do this, the square brackets are kind of like an accessor that lets me get at you know, one of the elements within the cart. And if I put the number here, that's the index of that element. So we saw over here that the first element in the array is the item that's named apple, right? So if I save and I refresh, you can see I get only that object this time. OK, so I said like, hey, only give me item number zero. If I say item number one, then it gives me the orange, right? Because that's the second item in the array. OK, and if I say item number two, then that'll be the third item in the array. It says opinion, right? If I give it a number like three or four, then when I run the code, it says undefined because there isn't a fourth item in the array. OK, so uh, so that's pretty good. How do I find out how many items are in the cart? Like I could say total uh, or a console log, and then I'll say cart. And then I'm going to say dot length. OK, so when I say um, array or you know name an array and then say dot length, 
then the computer tells me how many items are in the cart. So I can see three down here. Okay, so what if I wanted to display a message that said you have, you know, three items in your cart? Okay, let's do that. Let's say a console log. And now I have the problem that I want to print a string. You know, you have, you know, X items in your cart. But really what I want to do is where the X is right here. Let's actually try that. You can see it prints out. You have X items in your cart. But where the X is, what I want to do is I want to say cart bracket, you know, um, or actually dot length, right? Okay, and when I, when I do it this way, it just prints out cart dot length here. But I actually want the value, not the literal interpretation of that, right? So we're going to use a thing called a string literal. So if you want to combine variables with a, a string of characters, what you'll do is instead of the single quote, I'm going to get rid of the two quotation marks there, I'm going to use the back quote. Okay, so this is kind of, it's hard to see here, but it's a, um, it's kind of like this angled quote, and it's the character to the left of the number one on the top row of your keyboard, right? Okay, it's just below the tilde. Okay, and when I use this, you can see it prints out the same, um, let me save that and uh, refresh it. You can see it prints out the same thing, except if you've used the back quote where it says cart.length, you can put in this, this sequence here, you can say dollar sign curly braces, and then inside this special set of characters here, you can put a variable. So I could say cart.length, right? And now what it'll do is it'll get the value here and print that value within the string. So now you can see, wait, let me save this and, oh yeah, there we go. You have three items in your cart, okay? So it shows the three. And if I was to add another item to the cart here, um, let's add another item. How about a Frisbee? And Frisbee Zara. Uh, probably they're probably close to 10 bucks right so I'll put that in there and now when I refresh it here you can see it says four items in your cart okay so that's looking pretty good um, so let's stop there for now and then I'll do another video where we where we actually list all the items in the cart very carefully right so so far we've created an object here with keys and we've assigned values to those keys right and then we pushed the object into the cart. And then down here, we're logging the length of the cart. So we used length to get the number of items in the cart. Okay, and that's like gonna be important in the next step. So our next step is to use a loop to loop through all the items in the cart and print each one out very carefully like we did here. Okay, so anyway, thanks for watching and I hope this is, is useful to you. You can post a comment if you have any questions.